Hi, this is Mrs. La Barbara. This is AP Physics Chapter Six: Work and Kinetic Energy, Video One. Today's topic is work. So the uh, objectives for today is to know the definition of work in physics, and to know that work is a scalar quantity. To understand the meaning of positive and negative, and zero work. To be able to track who's doing the work, and to calculate the total work. Definition of work. Uh, work is done when a force exerted on a body causes the body to undergo the displacement. So there are two things: the force has to cause the body, then uh, to make the displacement. If if the force doesn't cause the body to undergo the displacement, then that force is not doing the work. So let's take a look at this picture. If a body moves through a displacement as well. A constant force F x on it in the same direction, then the work done by the force is for F times S. The SI unit for work is a joule. What is a joule? Force Newton times meter. That's a joule. A joule also equals to kilograms times meter squared over second squared because Newton is kilograms times meter divided by second, then you times meter again. That's how you get the unit for joule. Question: Work is capital W. Weight is lowercase w. Work is a scalar quantity. So if a car moves through a displacement, uh, displacement s, well, the constant force acting on it at an angle to the displacement. This force has two components. One is called f parallel to the displacement. The other one is perpendicular to the displacement. So as you can see, only the parallel force causes the displacement. The perpendicular force does not cause any displacement, so the work done is really equals to F parallel times displacement, and F parallel is F cosine phi times displacement, and this, as you can see, this looks familiar because that is a scalar product. So work is a scalar product of vector force and a vector displacement. W equals F dot S. And that also equals the component of f x times x plus f y times y plus f z times z. This is the equation we learned in chapter one. So work is the scalar quantity. That means work is disregard of directions. For example, a five newton force toward the east acting on a body that moves six meters to the east will have the same amount of work. As a five newtons toward the north, acting a body that moves six meters to the north, so the direction doesn't really matter. Let's take a look at our first example. So Andrew exerts a steady force of magnitude two hundred ten newtons on a stowed car as he pushes it a distance of eighty meters. The car also has a flat tire, so to make the car track straight, Andrew must push it at an angle of thirty degrees to the direction of motion. How much work does Andrew do? Well, straightforward work, F S cosine phi. Since we're using this because we know everything in this equation, F S and phi, we get thirty three hundred joules. But let's take a look at the next equation, next example. So in a helpful mood, Andrew pushes a second stowed car with a steady force. You know the force in this case, and you know the displacement. But this is giving you in component form. So how much work does Andrew do in this case? We can try to use the same equation again, but first we have to try to find the angle, and we learn how to find the angle in chapter one, and that is quite difficult. Another way to do this is to use the dot product. Dot product is basically you you multiply the components x times x and y times y. So what do you have? Is six one hundred sixty times fourteen minus forty times eleven. So you'll have eighteen hundred joules. Positive, negative, and zero work. So positive work, ah,、uh, that means if the force has a component in the direction of displacement, so that in the direction of displacement, the work done on the object is positive. That you will. Have the displacement and F parallel in the same direction. That's a positive. This one, like you pulling a cart. This one, like you walk the dog. Usually, the dog kind of walks you, right? In this case, 
you're doing a negative work on the dog because the force you applied on the dog is the displacement is opposite of your applied force. And one is zero work. Zero work is when force is perpendicular to the direction of displacement. If you have an upward force, for example, normal force and a gravity, in this case, would do zero work because they both are uh, perpendicular to the displacement. So again, let's take a look at example of zero work. So a weightlifter exerts an upward force on a barbell, but because the barbell is stationary, its displacement is zero, so he does no work acting, work, no work on the barbell. The weightlifter gets tired because the components of muscle fibers in his arm do work as they continually contract and relax. This is work done by one part of the arm exerting force on another part, however, not on the barbell. It didn't do any work on the barbell. Other examples of zero work could be this normal force I talked about last time. As the box moving to the right, the normal force and the gravity both are doing zero work. Another thing is if you have a string and you twirl it around, the tension does zero work also because this tension is perpendicular to the displacement at every single moment. So forces are perpendicular to displacement, no work done. So centripetal force never does any work. <coughs> Let's see, positive versus negative work. So a weightlifter lowers the barbell to the floor. Okay, let's take a look. The barbell does positive work on weightlifter's hand. So on what is doing the work, the barbell on, on the hand? Because the barbell is exerting of downward force and the, the hand is also going downward. So the barbell is doing positive work on weightlifter's hand. However, the weightlifter's hand does negative work on the barbell because the hand is exerting an upward force, but barbell is moving downward. So that's a negative work. So it's very important to keep track who is doing work, work on what body. So total work done on the body is algebraic sum of the quantities of work done by individual forces. Let's take a look at this example. A farmer hitches her tractor to a sled loaded with firewood and puts it a distance of 20 meters along the level ground. The total weight of the sled and load is 14,700 newtons. The tractor exerts a constant 500 newton force at an angle of 36.9 degrees above the horizontal. There is a 3,500 Newton friction force opposing the slide's motion. Find work done by each force acting on the sled and total work done by all the forces. So first you need to draw a picture, then you need to draw a free body diagram. So here's a picture and here's a free body diagram. As you can see, the free body diagram has weight, has normal force, has friction force, and has your tension force. This is the tension force is from the tractor exerted on the sled. Okay, so a fine work done by each force. The normal force equals to zero because normal force is perpendicular to displacement. The work done by the weight is also zero for the same reason. Work done by tension or by the tractor is Ft times displacement times cosine phi. Straightforward, 5,000 times 20 times cosine 36.9, you'll have 80,000 joules. Now work done by friction, 3,500 times 20 times cosine 180 because you uh, the angle is with positive x with the, the displacement is 180. So you get negative 7,000 joules. So what is the total work done? It's 10,000. So this is positive work, negative work, and the total work. There is another way for you to figure out what is the total work done. You can find a net force. Net force in this case, up and down cancels. Net force is only in horizontal direction, which gives you, <clears throat> well, I say up and down cancels because the sled is not moving up and down. It's the sled is in equilibrium in the vertical direction. So the net force is only in horizontal direction, which is 5,000 
times cosine 36.9 minus 3500. So you have 500 newtons. So you can use the net force times displacement. You also get 10,000. So as you can see, we did two ways and they are the same as we should. So uh, test your understanding. An electron moves in a straight line toward the east at a constant speed. It has electric, magnetic, and gravitational force acting on it. During a one meter displacement, what is the total work done on the electron? Let's see, what's the total work done again? Total work equals to net force times displacement. Since the electron is moving at a constant speed and in the same direction, east in a straight line, there is no net force. So the total work done on it must be zero. Okay, the answer is three. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.